Welcome back. We're here again with the solid state patch bay that I've built uh, for circuit bending. You can see that I've got it inside a case now. In addition, uh, we've hooked it onto its permanent home, which is this Roland TR626, as opposed to the 505 that the other uh, demo video was done on. Um, we're going to go ahead and go through the actual user interface here so you can see what I've done. Now, each of these dots represents uh, a patch point. So all four of those dots that are hooked together um, would be like one patch cable with four ends uh, plugging into each of those bend points. And that'll give you a particular sound. If you want to clear that particular patch, you can press the clear button or you can hit this red button right here and clear all of them. Um, but just pressing down somewhere that connects all of those bend points together. And we have eight different buses that we can connect bend points together on. Um, so this would be considered one patch. You have one four-ended cable hooking all of that together, or that, those would all be stacked. If we go over to, to bay two, I can start to set up a, a different patch. Um, but you can see that now I've muted out bay one. And the reason that it's done that is because this little green dot that I hit uh, is also used on patch bay one. So if two patch bays try and use the same um, patch point, the one that you're not working with is going to get muted out. I'm also going to add some manual mute unmute switches uh, across the top there, but that's to keep the, the bends from all combining with each other, which generally makes the sound turn to complete mush. Uh, so you can have conflicting bends that you can switch back and forth between just by selecting that particular bus number. Um, now go over to the keyboard here and you can see the keyboard scheme is fairly straightforward. Uh, star is for save, pound is for recall, there are four banks A, B, C, and D, and then the numbers just select which one you want to do. So if I want to recall uh, bank A1, I would say pound A1 pound and it's going to recall everything from bank 1. If I want to save that configuration to C3, I can say star C3 star and it's now going to save that configuration to C3. If I clear the configuration and I now say pound C3 pound, it's going to bring back that configuration that I just had over there. Um, in addition, we've got quick save, which is like the M plus on a calculator. If you press C, it just saves everything, all eight buses, to RAM temporarily. Uh, that's uh, if, in case you want to go back or something like that. You start messing with it, you don't like it, you go back to the sound you had it before, you can press D and it brings to quick restore. Um, and that's the basics of saving. As far as the banks themselves, bank A, B, and C each contain 128 uh, patches. So, so each each memory would be equivalent to looking at that screen and just seeing the 8x6 grid there and that configuration. Uh, so that's one patch. So banks A, B, and C contain patches and contain 128 each for a total of 384 user memories uh, for individual effects. And then bank D uh, saves all eight patches in the switchboard. So it saves the entire state of the whole box, basically, and, and all of the switches on it. But you only get 16 memories in bank D. So you have 16 saves that you can save the entire device or, or you have 384 individual effect saves that you can use via the memory. And that's pretty much how it works. Uh, next video we're going to actually try and uh, let you listen to it a little bit. I'm still working on the best way to do that so that you're not having to listen to it through teeny little speakers. I'm going to see if I can run a line out into my video editing and, and get it synced up to where, uh, to where you can get some good quality audio and actually hear what it sounds like because it sounds pretty cool.